Hello YouTube, especially all you knife lovers out there. Thought I'd take you along again on another knife assembly adventure that I'm going to attempt. Now as usual, I apologize in this location for the airy, echoey sound uh, that may be pronounced because I am using in-camera microphone. Um, the external microphone in the in the dangly wire just is not a good combination around power tools. So I do apologize for the ambient, but I think we could get through this sort of video no problem. So before I get going on uh, just showing you how I'm going about putting this thing together, I wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm working with here. The knife I'm going to be doing in this video is the 12C27 Scanny Ground Enzo Necker Knife. I picked this up uh, as a kit with scales from DLT Trading. Here are the scales right here, but I'm not going to be using the scales that it came with, nor the Corby bolt, nor the lanyard holes. I'm going to just use these as a template to make custom scales. And basically, let's see if I can get the camera to focus back up. Here we go. Uh, basically what I've done is I traced this pattern onto a clear piece of plastic. This was actually just a flat uh, portion of a container uh, that I had some drill bits come in. And I've mapped out the size and the uh, those little black dots are the holes where the pins would be. So I could do a layout on a wood block like this. Now I picked up a piece of stabilized wood and uh, it's got a lot of greens and golds and a little bit of black cracking looking finish in there. Um, this, this is kind of how it, it came. This side right here I buffed up a little bit just to see how slick it would get, how rich the colors would be and I'm really happy with it. And out of this one block I'm hoping to get a fire steel, a trapper, and um, these necker scales. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but basically what I've done is I've cut the block down where I've kind of like the grain into these little slats like this. And um, then what I've done is when I've liked the pattern, I've taken this clear design that I've done that I just showed you. And I place it over the grains and kind of rotate it around and flip it left to right till I get the pattern where I think I might like it on a scale. And then I trace it out with a pencil. And I've also made these kind of uh, temporary scales. These are actually significantly larger than the ones that come with them. They're thicker and, let me get the right one, larger overall. Now these are just made out of uh, scrap MDF I had laying around. But this will allow me to use it as a, uh, as a scale or a template replacement should I ever decide to use these or lose them. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. And it's actually worked out pretty good. And up to this point, um, actually last night I didn't have the camera out here but I went ahead and cut out two uh, scale templates um, the first one I cut was a little bit too narrow it didn't give me any sanding room to work which is unfortunate because I really like the way the grain came out on that that other scale but I'm down to, to these um, two pieces right now and it took me quite a while I didn't film it um, because I let me grab this here did the bulk of the job with a handsaw and and used a little bit I used a framing guide to get the line straight because I had to cut a long block so thin I don't currently have a bandsaw so I was doing this and it took forever uh, kind of roughed out the design angles with this as well and then got the finishing touches done on the belt sander so that kind of is an idea of where I'm at in this process this morning a little bit of rain coming in Go figure, I'm building a knife, so it's got to be raining, right? Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and line up and drill the holes for the scales. I'm going to bore out this uh, current size pinhole right here and make it a full quarter inch because that's the size uh, pins and lanyard loop I'm going to be using. Now, the back is already a quarter inch, so I don't have a problem working. I'm going to be using a brass rod in uh, the back here as my lanyard hole. And in the front, I've got another mosaic. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Back it up. There you go. Got a mosaic pin with brass and stainless and black epoxy. This side right here, I've kind of, I hit it with the strop just to see how it would come out. I don't know if this is really focusing the way I want it to. That'll probably show up right there. I think it'll be a nice combination with this green and kind of gold wood. Alright guys, so there's a tour, if you will, on what I'm going to be using to put this together, my thought process, some of the ideas I had about how to pick out grains in the woods, and uh, hopefully you find some of that helpful, uh, but now I'm going to get on to uh, putting this baby together.
All right, so before I get to doing any more of the, the drilling and cutting, I want to show you what I was working on here. And this is basically a platform that I made out of scrap piece of MDF board. And I have another one right here I'm still in the process of making. You can see I've sunk the, the, the nut tops on this right here so they'll seek in and be the level with the uh, surface. Sorry, I can't show you that any better because I've got this manually focused so it wasn't jumping all over the place. But on the back, I've got a piece of this rubberized coating. Uh, glued to the board and that's the same thing that's going on here. It's the same thing I have going on my work surface. Um, again, the stuff you can put in uh, shelves to put uh, tools on so they don't slide around or similar to what you would use in a house cabinet or drawer to keep utensils and plates from sliding around. But all I've done is made these um, studs, kind of like jig studs here. Here's an example. And all it is is a screw with a large washer or a small washer, a wing nut, and in the middle there's a plastic spacer tube. Um, you can pick those up at Home Depot for like 50 cents. And what I've done is I've I've drilled multiple holes along here. The plan is to do it on this side too, but I'm going to do it on the thicker board back there. And what this does is allows me to provide a uh, resting surface so that as I'm drilling, if a little bit of tension happens, sometimes these bird bits like to start to grab the metal. It'll actually, if it gets a hold of whatever you're drilling, it'll turn it in the direction, the force of the drill, which is clockwise. So what I've done is I've made a stud here, and I plan on putting studs all along here so I can get varying sizes. And then once I've lined this up exactly where I'm sorry, once I've lined this up exactly where I want it, um, the pressure or the force will push against the the knobs that I've I've made to keep this from sliding around. Um, I had a vice for this. I just didn't like the way that it held the, the knife. I was never sure if the knife was completely level on the top or not. So this is pretty, you know, easy remedy and that's what I'm doing for now. We'll see if this changes up, but I did want to show you kind of what I was working on um, in case you were curious. So I've got this carbide um, countersink and it's a 60 degree. It's very shallow so that it can get into smaller holes and, and kind of uh, even out the opening a little bit. And I'm using this not only to even out the uh, burring, which that burr bit does a really good job of making a very, very clean cut, but I just use this to countersink the outside of the opening because it makes entering the inserting the pins and things like that a little bit easier. It gives them something to kind of um, fall down into. But this really works best and cleanly at lower speeds right now. In fact, there's a few little bumps left just using the hand drill to lower speed. The drill press is too fast in my experience, at least with the 12C27, even on some aluminum. It makes a skippy pattern and uh, not anything really smooth. So all I'm doing now is, is hand grinding out the ridges that it kind of creates or did create in this finish.
All right, guys, so this is a look at what it looks like with the uh, holes drilled uh, through the scales. And since I wasn't using something that was factory made, I went ahead and drilled it actually through the handle to make sure that the alignment, everything was perfect. Um, I didn't want it to be off because if you go to hammer these things through and they're not lined up and you've got epoxy on, um, you could be in trouble. So uh, basically what I'm going to do now is knock these temporary pins out. These are the lanyard loops that Enzo provides and uh, I'm not currently using them so I'm using them as just kind of spacers. Um, I'll pop this off. I'll go ahead. These look pretty good to me right here. The scales, maybe this side's a little bit higher. But use the pins with, with no blade in the middle, pin them together, run them on a sander. Make sure that at least this front end up here, where it's going to be kind of out of a sanding zone for the most part, is aligned. Maybe go ahead and give them a little bit of a taper toward the front, but kind of see if I can get them as symmetrical as possible. Then I will cut the lanyard opening and the, lanyard opening and the pin and uh, go ahead and get the epoxy ready. The handle doesn't have the finishing that the exterior portion does, but it's still really, really slick. So um, I just finished roughing up the pins with a file. I don't know if this is going to focus here. There we go. So those are roughed up. Now I'm just going to rough up the interior to get ready for the epoxy. dipples for the epoxy to help grab onto so
I'm going to want to do is make sure I rotate the pin the direction I want it. Which in this case is a diamond, so I'm going to make it kind of vertical. Make sure it's about even between the two pieces. In the back, the same. I'm going to wipe the excess off the outside of the handle as best I can. I know I'm going to be sanding a lot of this, but the less crud, the better. I probably just need two. Again, nothing real, real, real serious. I like these ones with the little ball head because they can adjust to the contour. So, just let this sit overnight. So all I've done here this morning is go ahead and flatten up the, uh, the mosaic pins flush with the, uh, the face of the knife handles. And do a little bit more work with the file maybe on this pin right here just to make sure it's nice and even. And I'm going to go through and work on sanding the excess along the, the tang here and then uh, working on some finer grits for the contouring and things like that. So I've got the excess wood from around the tang uh, mostly removed. There's a little bit left around here, and I'm going to do that with a like you know roughed out piece of wood as a sanding block, starting with 150 and working my way up from there. I'm still on the 150, um, getting rid of some of the excess glue, making sure this is really, really nice and clean and flush, but I'm also contouring. This uh, was pretty sharp along here. I'm also giving a contour to all the angles and stuff. Like right now, this is pretty pretty sharp, and, and some people may like that, but I like a blade with a little bit more uh, rounded quality to it. So I'm just spending as much time as I need to 
on the 150 grit, which is the lowest grit I'm going to be using at this point, um, to make sure that I'm not taking off too much at a time, but I'm still removing enough uh, to make the contours that I want, get the shape and everything that I need. Once I have that, progressing through the grits will become a lot quicker uh, because I won't be trying to reshape with the other grips as so much as uh, polish and kind of refine. I'm doing now is kind of get this focus here working around on my hands a little bit to see if there's any rough contours it is just a necker knife but still I want it to be as as well done as possible let me show you up here what I've done if this will focus here change the focusing point a little bit over here all right so you can see it's rounded more on the edges everything is kind of where it should be Right now, I'm checking these these uh, rounded corners right here, making sure everything, all the metal that touches is smooth. Um, it feels really, really nice. Really, really nice in the hand. But I'm just going through right now, like I said, making sure that it's it's got a blockiness where, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's rounded. I don't like anything sharp back here. Um, kind of see if anything pokes out at me. feels really good. So I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit more really examine it um, up close and then start uh, rocking the higher grits. Okay, so there's a little bit of glue residue left, nothing major. Um, I'm just going to use a small scraper. Like a dental, whoop, like a dental style scraper to get some of that excess stuff that I can't reach with my fingernail. On 320 now, did some 220. Not using the, the block as much, the wood block with the sandpaper wrapped around it. I did on the really rough hard contouring to start, but this handle is a little bit more rounded than the stock trapper scales that I, or sorry, the, yeah, I guess the, tra uh, the stock handles I used last time on the trapper I did. I don't want any part of it to become too flat or it to make a hard, hard line. So, kind of freehanding it. It also allows me to feel the contour more as I'm doing it. See the wood's got a little bit of polished look to it now. This is, I'm currently on 1000 and uh, I think I will finish with 2000 just because, well, I have it at my disposal and I just want it going as fine as I can. All I'm doing now is taking a uh, soft cloth and uh, getting all of the rest of the the sand the sanding um, residue the dust and stuff off of the uh, outside of the handle make it kind of as clean as possible and go ahead and show you a close up here if it will focus as usual so, 
there you have the mostly finished product. I really like how the grains came together at like a point. Really came out really nice. What I'm going to do now, if you watch the um, video I did on uh, putting the LMAX Trapper together, I'm going to use a uh, small leather field strop and some Bark River Right compound. And basically what I'm going to do, put a little bit on there and just kind of go over the, the metallic portions, just kind of buff them up a little bit before I put this on the buffer. This has been sanded out through, I think is like 1200 grit. And so it's, it's nice and there's not a lot of uh, s uh, scraping or anything on the pins. But I'm just going to give them a little bit of a kind of a polish there before I put this up against the buffer. So that's what I'll be doing now. I'm trying to keep the corner of it as much on the metal as possible. And uh, just to bring that out because it will, this black will uh, get a little bit of like a residue on the wood. But that's why I'm doing it before I hit it with the buffer just to see if it'll give it a little bit more sheen than just the buffer will by itself. Just a little bit more luster, maybe. I don't know. All right, guys, I don't know if this will show up in the video, but I don't know if you can see it, but I can see my breath. It's really chilly out in the workshop, so I'm calling this one a wrap. Just get a little bit of the tape residue off the blade. You can see right here these scrapings. That uh, pan sandpaper got a little bit away from me when I was sanding the uh, tang to prepare for the epoxy, but another part of trial and error we'll just chalk that error up to but most of all i was doing the the handle for the first time and i really am super stoked about how this came out the emeralds and golds really work well together i think and pop i like how the green uh came out with you know all kinds of woods you never know what you're going to get when you cut into them so this was a lot of fun i like how the uh, pins and the lanyard holds complement it at least in my opinion so as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was a cure for some boredom, maybe picked up a few new tricks. I don't know. Uh, but if you're like me on YouTube, sometimes it's fun just watching other people hang out, playing with uh, their toys and tools. If you've never done one of these, I highly encourage you to do it. If you've got some uh, hand tools around and uh, a couple power tools, go for it. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of satisfaction in it. I am currently addicted. In fact, so much so, I plan on doing a couple more videos in the coming weeks. I've got an 01 trapper 95 mil that needs a handle and some pins as well as a 115 mil trapper and 12c27 so i have more of this emerald and gold that i plan on using for one of those two got a blue and red combination that i just picked up online at night hopefully that'll be coming in, in a couple weeks and uh, put some more character uh, together in some knives for you guys all right well until the next time i hope you're enjoying all your knives your kits your time with power tools and of course the great outdoors and until we meet again guys sheathing this one up be safe and god bless